So we're back again with another uh, Junior Cycle 2023 uh, exam question. We are moving on to question four, part E. So this is our axonometric, isometric question. Um, it's a straightforward enough question. The only thing that we have to really be concerned about is that circle on the front surface. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just label off for our, all of the points kind of that we can see on our 3D view down the bottom. Okay, so we have point A, point B, point C, and point D. So what I've done is I've just basically translated what I've identified on the 3D view up onto my 2D view. So I'm starting on the left-hand side and I'm just labeling all these up all the way down to uh, H. Okay, so we have all of those labeled up in our left-hand view. We're gonna go ahead and label them up on our right-hand view. So A and E are uh, behind one another, our E is behind A, we then have B and F, we then have C and uh, G, and then finally we have D and H. Okay, so this would just be a key way of us kind of linking those points together in our 3D view. So we already have H, because that's been established for us on our, um, on our question sheet, and we have C and we have D. Okay, so I've just gonna label them up in our 3D view. So now what we can start doing is we can start bringing in those points and trying to identify where they all match up essentially. So I'm gonna start out with my front surface. So I'm gonna start out with the A and B surface, A, B, C, D, that surface there that we start out with. Okay, so um, all I'm essentially gonna do is actually, uh, first of all, I'm gonna actually just label up where F is. So F has already been established for us as well because I missed that earlier on. So F is here, that's essentially been established for us in our um, question sheet. However, that F and B in our elevation over on the right hand side is going to be key for us to establish where that F, B, C, D surface is. Okay, so I'm going to bring that, um, that point B down into my 3D view and I'm going to bring A and B down into my 3D view as well. And where they cross, that's going to give us point B. Okay, so now we have point B, that will also bring down point A, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to put a vertical line from C in, and that will give us where A ends up. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to establish this entire cube, basically. So I brought down the point E and F there, and I'm just going to go around in heavy, because we know there's not going to be anything splitting these guys up, there's not going to be any hidden detail or anything like that, because they're never raised in 3D. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw the kind of cube base now. So that's three sides of our cube, or two sides, two sides of our cube done. I'm just gonna establish where these points are back here with our construction line. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this top surface of the, the, um, the pyramid down into my, um, into my 3D view. So I've just brought the top uh, point of our pyramid down in. And then all I can do is, or all I have to do essentially, is just use my set square to just join up the points. So I know where that top surface of the pyramid is. I know where all these top corners of the square surfaces are. So all I'm doing is just using my set square um, to join them all up. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways in which you can go about solving the um, circular surface um, in 3D, okay? So what I'm essentially gonna do is I'm gonna draw a square around my circle. So I'm gonna use my sliding set squares now to basically draw a square around that circle, um, or at least give me some height. So how far up between A and C or B and D does that circle actually end, okay? So I'm just gonna use these heights to basically to find out where, basically where that circle is essentially in my front square surface of my 3D. And likewise, I'm gonna do the same uh, with vertical lines. So essentially the distance between A and B or, the C, or C and D for my square, for my circle. Okay, so like I said, I drew a square, essentially drawing a square around that circle um, to find roughly where it's going to end up or where it's going to end up in my, my 3d view okay so like i said there's a multitude of ways to do this 
so the first way I'm going to demonstrate is I'm going to do the top um, semicircle of my curve using heights. So all I'm essentially going to do is I'm going to come up from the center line of the circle, up 15 and up another 15, and I'm going to get two points on my circle. Okay. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring these heights down into my plan or into my, sorry, into my 3D view. So I know roughly where that circle or where that circle is going to end up. Okay, so I'm bringing these heights down to my plan. That's the distance between the lines D and B or B and D. And I'm going to bring them across in my 3D view. So I know roughly where my circle is going to end up. Okay, so it's going to be tangential to that point. The center point is going to be somewhere along that line. And then it's going to be tangential to the point down below. Likewise, I'm just bringing these points here. So that's where essentially that square that I was talking about earlier on, that's where that's gonna end up in my 3D view, okay? So my circle is gonna fit somewhere inside this square here that I've established in my 3D view, okay? So that's square that you can kind of see in that front surface there. So my circle is gonna be in there somewhere. So we're gonna zoom into the elevation over here, okay? So like I said earlier on, I'm gonna use uh, horizontal cuts essentially to do the top semicircle and then I'll show you a different technique of doing the bottom semicircle. So I'm going to use heights of 10 and um, so I'm just going to mark off 10 on my set square vertical heights um, and a second one there to establish two points on my circle. Okay I'm going to use my sliding set squares then to draw a horizontal line straight through that uh, circle and that will give us two heights. So we already have where the center line is, we already have where the top of the circle is. So now we have essentially two more heights for our circle to establish our curve in 3D. Okay, so I'm just gonna label these up. I'm gonna go one and two now in a second. Um, and I'm gonna locate four points essentially on my circle. Okay, so I have, um, I have the center line and then I have uh, one and two. And I'm gonna bring them down into my 3D, those heights down into my 3D, like so. Okay, so just gonna label that up, number one and number two. And essentially that's gonna give me one point here in my circle. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring that, where that point is on my circle, down into my 3D view. Um, and I'm gonna bring the one above it as well. And then I can use the heights then to establish where they are, okay? So, I'm going to look for this one here first, and then I'll do this one. So that's one first, two second. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring where that first height hits my curve or hits my circle down into my 3D view, and that's going to give me the point on the circle. Second height now down into my 3D view, and that's going to essentially give me a full quadrant. Okay, so we know roughly where the center line is we know where the vertical center line is so i should be able to establish uh, four points on that curve okay so i have two now and um, i brought that height across for my center line so that's where that is and then i can bring down my vertical center line that's it now and that's my fourth point on that curve so i essentially have a quadrant done okay and i'm just gonna bring it down in 3d as well so we know where that center line is so i have a quadrant essentially marked out and then I can use the same technique that I just did now to bring down the opposite quadrant to this, okay? So I'm just going in here with a faint line using my freehand techniques. As we know, a curve should be freehand in 3D. So that's the freehand line done, okay? I'm just gonna extend those one and two heights through my circle now. And that's gonna essentially give me two more points and we'll finish out this quadrant okay so that's going to give me two more points on the circle and it's going to finish out this quadrant so all i'm going to do now is i'm going to bring those points from my elevation down into my 3d view i'm just extending those lines across and um, those height lines down across so where those height lines hit my circle in my elevation here i'm just going to bring that down that's my first one that's my second one 
and that will give me two more points on the circle. They're quite close to one another, um, but that will give me two more points on my circle, um, and it will finish out that semicircle. Okay, so you, we'll just press pause there for a second. You could do that again a second time for the bottom part of the semicircle, but I'm gonna show you a different technique of doing this, okay? Now this would be someone might do this if they were a little bit better at their um, their freehand curve drawings or someone who enjoys doing ellipses, that sort of stuff, okay? So the other thing we can do is we can essentially join, once we've established that square around our circle, we can join the two, um, opposite points of one another. So basically create an X through our square. So I forgive me, my, my head's in the way again, but we've essentially drawn an X through our circle and established two points on our curve. And once we've established that square in our 3D, we can just essentially join that up again and create that exact same X, but in our 3D view. Okay, so we're just gonna join them fellas up. We've already established this square in our 3D shape uh, already. We did that earlier on and we're just gonna draw that square in. Okay, so you have that square drawn in, we have the square drawn in in elevation. So where those two points hit our curve, we can just bring them straight into 3D. Okay, so we'll just bring this one straight down here into 3D. However, you have to be careful, okay, because this one obviously can't be brought straight down to 3D. Okay, you can see that, that my set square lines up with my, with my X, okay? So all I'm doing is I'm bringing this height across to hit the other point on our X essentially okay so we know that these guys are aligned in our elevation so therefore they must be aligned in our um, 3d view so we now have two more points on our circle we already have the two vertices essentially of our um, our vertices essentially of our of our um, of our circle by finding our horizontal lines our horizontal center lines and then all I'm going to go ahead and do is just freehand in that curve okay so like I said this might be for someone for who's a little bit more comfortable freehanding in curves and um, but it's a really really quick way in which you can establish this curve in 3d okay so that is the last part of question 4e and um, again stay tuned for some more videos with the uh, remaining questions in the 2023 junior cycle paper and if you have any questions or you want to see the solutions they're all linked below in the video okay thanks very much bye